Hello everyone, welcome back to Cross Slash Gamer TV here with another video and we're pretty much, by the time this video goes live, it will be a week before we get our hands on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or part two of the remake uh, trilogy. And, you know, I find myself just sitting here and realizing, you know, how amazing it is to be a gamer at this point. Um, for different reasons, obviously. One, well, gaming is my thing, right? It's what I specifically do or choose to do in my free time. Um, and it's kind of like, I feel like almost happy to have this thing that I do, which makes everything else seem just in non, non important, right? Um, gaming is, is to me like the best and most affordable way to escape um, the the grind of reality. Um, we know it's always there, we, it's a given, we have to live and we have to work and we have to pay our dues to, to get through this life. But every time you just turn on a, a PC or, or a console and you, and you load up that save, all of a sudden you are transported to a different world. And there's not many people that can do that, right? Gamers have a unique um, way to, I guess, what, what I would call mindfulness. So it, it is a form of mindfulness because you're completely switching off every other part of your brain as, during this time when you're playing a video game. Now, I, again, it's, it's for me, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm glad to be alive right now. Anything could have happened. Anything can still happen before this game gets released. But And we've still got another one to come after that. Um, but as I've, I've told my friends uh, over time that the remake trilogy is kind of like my gaming career coming full circle. Um, it's, it's Final Fantasy VII is just this point in my life where... I, I can honestly say I probably was the most, the happiest I could ever possibly be. And this isn't to say, you know, when you have kids or when you get married, those are not the happiest moments of your life, but that was the happiest, stress-free, um, no responsibility. Like, I was 12 when I played Final Fantasy VII for the first time. And... Uh, and there was nothing else. There was no. There was no worries. There was no stress. There was nothing. It was just me, my console. You know, I had friends, obviously, but and and it's kind of like a weird story of how I came to be introduced to Final Fantasy VII. But um, well, once I started playing it, that was it. There was no other game that compared to it. And there was the Metal Gear Solids back then. There was the Crash Bandicoots. Um, the Resident Evils, it was all out there. But Final Fantasy VII just had that magic. It just got you, it just gripped me in, and there was nowhere back. I, c I couldn't go back. Um, true story, um, where I grew up, technology wasn't a priority, and uh, ultimately I ended up getting my PlayStation well late. Um, I played Final Fantasy VII, or I started playing Final Fantasy VII in my cousin on my cousin's PlayStation. Um, the funny, the funny part of it is, I didn't know what it was. I couldn't actually get Cloud to move forward or understand exactly the type of game I was playing. It was a the the 3D concept to me back then was very strange. Um, so I gave up on it. I literally just switched. I was like, "What the hell is this crap?" And I switched it off. Went back to Tekken 2. <laughs> um, and then some years later, a group of friends at school, same age, uh, start talking about this game. Yeah, it's amazing, and they're telling me all about it. And you just can't. They couldn't stop talking about it. Um, so one day, my, one of my other cousins asked to borrow the first CD of the game, which they, they you know, he, he ended up playing, and we were hooked. Again, you know, taking turns, just. 10 minutes here, half an hour there, we were hooked playing it. <laughs> and and by the time we got to the end of disc one, we were stuck because we had to wait for the rest of the, you know, the guy that owned the game to finish disc two so we could then borrow it and play it. 
Um, and it's kind of like these special sort of scenarios, these things that happen, you know, around this game that make it even more special because um, you couldn't write it, right? It just it just is what it is. We had one copy between four different friends. I, I was the last to actually get my hands on it. And uh, by that time, I just decided, you know what, I can't. I can't experience it this way. I know what the game like, what the game is, what it looks like, but I need a copy for myself. I need a PlayStation. So I started saving every single penny I had, um, work odd jobs, you know, and until I got enough money for a PS One and a copy of Final Fantasy VII. Eventually, I got it. I started playing it, and I could not. There was just nothing else. There was just nothing else compared. Um, from that point onwards, as I progressed through my life and I grew older, uh, obviously Final Fantasy VIII came out, nine, and then Final Fantasy X, God, that was the big, that was amazing, like the big step into like H, not HD graphics, but like it was just another level of, of graphic fidelity and what Square was cooking at that time. Um, I always remember the FMV or CG uh, of Yuna coming out of the temple so the first time you see Yuna and she comes stumbling out down the stairs and then when she gets you know kind of looks up and composes herself and you get like a stream of, of water coming down her face and her two-tone color eyes it was just you know these moments stay with you but the only reason that is special then or all the way till now is because of Final Fantasy 7 and the journey that started there Every, we always compare to the last best thing so anything that comes after Final Fantasy 7 if it's called Final Fantasy or if it's, even if it's an RPG I know there's, there's so many different types and so many different types of games in general um, but the emotional involvement and the way I felt playing Final Fantasy 7 I have been trying to capture it again with any other game pretty much and um, unless I feel that way about a game it's it doesn't if it doesn't stick in that in, in that emotional level then it's it's a great game it'll, ha it'll be a great game in, in its own right but it won't be the same to me it won't be final fantasy 7 same Thanks. so you can only imagine how i felt when square decided to drop that bomb that they were remaking final fantasy 7 as a trilogy um, i've played some incredible games some of the games that kind of top highlights in my life again emotionally that doesn't mean they're the best games ever made but they they hit with me was like kingdom hearts one uh even kingdom hearts 2 i was really in, infatuated by those games um, they're still really good to me i think that they just capture this magic um dragon quest 8 the curse of the, the journey of the cursed king definitely top tier that game switch, that is um final fantasy 10 obviously um, just looking around my my room now persona persona 5 for sure great amazing game so d these are just a few examples of games that that made me feel a semblance of what final fantasy did to me back then because that's it now that's that's my that's my grading that's my my standard it's it's final fantasy 7 standard that I need to feel the same way I felt when I was 12 playing Final Fantasy 7 and I know it's silly chasing nostalgia this way I'm 40 now um, it's crazy realizing how fast time has progressed but my my measure of happiness is something that's very tangible because of how I can link myself all the way back to 1997, 1998, 1999 when I was playing Final Fantasy 7. It's it's a measure, it's like it was weird even through some of the hardest times in my life, as sad as it sounds, um, when things were going wrong I would actually think to myself well at least it's Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> it's so sad, I know, it's ridiculous, but it helped. It helped. It, it it was it was something that's tangible. It's a, it's a tangible form of happiness. It was it, and and so the 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 feeling that I've been trying to capture all this time has to link back to that to my to to that that part of me. 
uh, of when I was 12 playing this game. So remake comes out. Everyone's you know skeptical about can Square pull this off because SquareSoft has Square Enix has had such a a weird few years. Um, in, in, you know the 2000s have not been very good to them. Final Fantasy 12, 13, not the, the highest rated uh, games, uh, I, I would say, I would argue. But they, I've played them all, I loved them all for what they were. Um, I, I was thoroughly impressed with Final Fantasy 7 Remake because I believe that it is, it feels like in my head exactly what it, it felt when I was a kid. When I play the remake and I and I go through the characters as you're seeing on screen, like I'm, I'm watching them talk and I'm watching them move and the way they think, the things they say, it feels exactly like the OG, right? So it, it's almost a, a, a beauty. It's 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 incredible how they managed to do it, but they did it. The game looks better than half the movies we you know computer animated movies you see on TV these days. The battle system is just um, insanely good. Um, I released a video uh, the other day around uh, me doing uh, the boss battle with, against Weiss or Weiss, whatever you name, whatever call him. I was, it was just so in depth that that battle, the the the, the, the customization behind the, the sort of arranging my material and everything, and and trying to get my way around, like just digging deep and and getting good, <laughs> was a pleasure. And, and I finally beat him after about nearly an hour or so, or forty odd minutes, um, and and it was amazing. I was like, "This is this is such a great battle system, and it's the definite best battle system that exists today." Like it, it just it's a hybrid of old and new. Um, it's kind of like the reason I think Final Fantasy XVI didn't do as well as it could have because people were compare were trying to like compare. The battle system with seven to sixteen because they say oh it's very similar well it isn't it isn't similar at all it's sixteen is this hyper action focused battle system almost like a devil may cry um and seven you can literally pause midway and think and select and input commands in order um to uh, take advantage of a situation so um yeah, it, watch that video. You'll see me, my progress. I think I did like rounds two and one and two. And then I think I go to round ten, round nineteen, and then round twenty-eight. I think I've just got, like kind of put them all together in a video showing me getting good, progressively better at kicking his ass um, until I finally killed him, and it, it was brilliant. Um, anyway, I digress. The battle system's great. Um, the 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 the. the the guys, whoever did the, the selection of the voice acting deserves an award because every single voice in the game so far has been top notch. Uh, fun fact, uh, this Sunday I'm going to meet the voice of Barrett, the voice of Kate, Kate Sif and the voice of Zack. Um, so I'm look, very much looking forward to that. I'm going to take my uh, a copy of Final Fantasy, get them to sign it and uh, have to sit down and think about some you know clever questions to ask them because it's kind of like meeting your heroes um, in a weird way like meeting the voice of Barrett like he's always been there in my a constant in my life and now he exists in real life um, he he I know it's 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 insane um, so I'm, I can't wait to go and, and meet those guys and and have this uh, memory uh, that will save me forever um, anyway Remake has not disappointed me. I dare I say that re the Final Fantasy VII Remake and I think Rebirth, I, I haven't played it obviously, but I, I know, I can just feel it. It's going to be this dense game full of things to do, much like the original, but even more. Um, with with an, a nice pace and build up and, and so many activities to, to go around and complete. Um, it's just going to feel great. Um, and 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 I feel like remake shows me and the faith, you know that that it's given me so much faith in in the company and the people behind making this this trilogy, because I can't help but feel grateful. They are giving me another opportunity to experience my favorite game of all time, 
directly con linking me back to my 12 year old self. So this is kind of what I said to my friends, this is going back to what I said earlier. This trilogy, assuming I live in long enough to, to play the third, the third part, is literally my gaming career coming full circle because they may remake Final Fantasy VII again in, in 50 years, but I don't think I'll be around to see it. Um, and, I, and, and I think after I play part three, assuming I get there, I, I think I'll be, it's like my crave for video games might just calm itself down a bit um, because I've, I've done it again. Maybe, maybe, or maybe it will elevate. I don't know. Maybe I'll want more. Maybe I'll, I'll be looking even for more uh, of this nostalgic pumping feeling. But I don't know. Maybe not. Um, so, so I, I can't wait, guys. Um, I, I recently went through the whole of Final Fantasy VII again, um, the remake. I mean, and uh, I've played the OG way too many times to bother. Um, but, but, uh, and I will play it again at some point. I'm trying to get my wife to play it. Bloody Nora. Um, but I played uh, Intermission, so the Yuffie DLC, and I can confidently say just playing it again after a few months and doing the, the Whis battle, boss battle thing, it just feels insanely good. Um, and I think what I gathered most of when I played it as Yuffie was how like it's it's a completely different character it's she she plays completely different to cloud and to all the others her ninjutsu spells and everything the throwing of the star um and then obviously there's the the the, the sinking of the characters so the synergy i guess which is carrying through I, I believe that was already like the early days of what the synergy connection between characters would be like um going into uh, rebirth uh, so when you play as Yuffie again, and I advise anything, so I think the two two big things that I think anyone should do, or, or three in this case, before going into Rebirth, if you have time, is definitely play the whole of Remake, def and then play Intermission if you can. And last but not least, I want to make a reference, a short reference, to the book. Uh, is it Tale of Two Pasts? Hold on one second. No. It's just called Traces of Two Pasts. So it's the um, the novel by Kazu Kazusuji Nujima, Nujima, uh, so who's the main writer, uh, scenario writer for Final Fantasy VII. It's been around from the very beginning. And the other reason I'd suggest reading this book is because it is literally a bridging gap between the end of remake and the beginning of rebirth. Um, there's still there's this it kind of jumps around a little bit um like it kind of also goes into rebirth but uh around say um because it's a it's pretty much a conversation between Aerith and tifa and they're literally just telling each other where their their backgrounds it's an in-depth look of at when they were kids and growing up and what happened to the point of where you know they end up together uh, and it's them retelling the story as they travel with Cloud and the gang. Um, even Red Red Thirteen makes a, a couple of appearances in the middle of the book, and it's a pretty fun way to insert your sort of imagination uh, into these characters' sort of lives. It's it's really cool. I really enjoyed the book, and I would advise everyone anyone if if they have a minute to read it before playing Final Fantasy um, Seven uh, Rebirth. Because obviously on, on uh, right now you guys are seeing the, the video footage of uh, Yuffie um, uh, of the intermission and it's yeah it, it does look amazing right um, so guys look I, I just wanted to kind of make this video as kind of like a touch point for myself because I think that it's kind of cathartic to make these videos um, talking I'm just here in a room talking to myself about myself about my own memories my opinions about this game and, and how it makes me feel and I'm just sharing it out there I don't care people want to mock me they can mock me they can do whatever they want I don't really give a shit uh, but ultimately it just kind of it makes me touch base you know it's it's, um, it's kind of like praying I'd say to some some other people might feel like they feel good when they pray for me this is this is what makes me feel good it's talking about the things I love and enjoy and most most of it is me sharing the things I love and enjoy with other people 
Um, so, guys, if there's anyone out, out, out there that has not played Final Fantasy VII OG or Remake, do yourself a favour. If you like video games, that's the first thing you should do today as you've finished watching my video. <laughs> um, please like, share and subscribe is all I ask. Uh, every every subscription uh, is and your support just kind of motivates me to make these videos. Uh, I won't be this, you know, sappy going forward. Uh, I just wanted to make this video because I'm, I'm kind of like feeling it. It's kind of, we're getting close. We're one week away from Rebirth and um, I, I'm just, yeah, getting emotional in it. Um, I think uh, if just, if, you, if I was to compare myself with anyone uh, who kind of shares a similar sort of background, it'd be Maximilian Dude, the other content creator out there. He's awesome. Uh, but his his past and his the way he thinks of the game, the way he feels on camera, that's pretty much me. Um, and I, I hope I end up as half as, as successful as he is um, going forward. But uh, guys, please again like, share, and subscribe. Would be amazing. And uh, please stay tuned to my following videos. Take care. Leave some comments below. Like the video, please. And uh, good luck. All the best. Much love. See you in the next video. Bye.